Hi, it's the Lipstick Gal. Thank you so much for watching today. And I wanted to share with you my January favorites. Before we get started, I did want to say thank you so much for subscribing. I've had a lot of people subscribing in the last 30 days and I really appreciate it. If you haven't and you've been enjoying the videos I've been putting out, would you please subscribe? All right, so I spent a lot of time this month sick in bed, so there's not a lot of makeup. And some of the makeup is just kind of what I've been habitually reaching for. Some of these you know, some of these you've seen, and some of the rest of them, I hope it all makes sense. But I did decide, because there were so many other things that I really, really, really fell in love with, um, and have been like just non-stop, I thought we'd talk about some non-beauty things too. All right, so uh, I'm gonna start with skincare. I was like, where do I start? There's a lot. I have been loving, I'm a huge skincare fanatic. I use a lot of products. I'm one of those who layers and layers and layers, really thin layers from the lightest formula to the thickest formula to make sure that I get everything to lay down nicely. And I use just a wide range and a lot on a daily basis, morning and evening. Um, I start with a double cleanse and then I'll put on um, a toner or an essence and then kind of move on through serums and other things. And I, I always wear a lot, but um, for some reason, and then I'm beyond the delicious but not good for you foods that I was eating around the holidays and shortly after, um, I started noticing a lot of texture cropping up on my chin and that has been a problem area for me since I hit my 30s. Um, my skin was like a little baby doll all the way through my 20s. I felt like I had perfect skin and I never really worried about it. And in my 30s, I started dealing with a lot of acne. And especially after I had both my girls from 35 to 40, I had a ton of acne that was really, really overwhelming. And that's when I started discovering certain types of products um, exfoliating acids and things like that that have really helped to keep these sorts of and they're just little teeny tiny white bumps at bay uh, it also helps to really make sure my pores are nice and clean so they don't get really enlarged so it does help with the pore texture as well as the little teeny tiny bumps that I have here uh, one of those things, I always use a retinol, but I've been loving this product here. This is from Pharmacy. This is their Honeymoon Glow AHA Resurfacing Night Serum. So uh, after I double cleanse at night, take all my makeup off, uh, wash again, uh, I'll put on a toner, an essence, and then I'll throw some of this on. Now, I can't use this every single night. I could in the summertime, and I have. But because it does tend to dry my skin out a little bit, I tend to have a lot more oils uh, in the summertime and the warmer months, but when it's cold, my skin gets so dry from, you know, I live in a place where it's really, really, really cold, but it's a dry cold. And then on top of that, all the heaters in cars and houses and like the portable little round sun disc that I take with me from room to room to keep me warm, because I'm always cold too. Um, I find that really dries my skin out. So I have to be careful not to use a retinol product like this every single night. I do it every other night. So on the nights that I'm not using the Honeymoon Glow, I have been in love with this. This is from May Love. It's the Night Renewer Glycolic Acid Cream. So uh, I don't know if you can see there's hardly any left in here. You get two ounces in this, and I believe this is $28. And every time I go to repurchase it, because I'm almost out, it has been out of stock. I hope it's in stock, because I'm like, I don't want to be out of this. I've had this for, I would probably say six months. And it's always been really good at keeping my texture at bay, but I fell out of the habit of using it in November and through December. And then I started noticing like it was really creeping up. And in January, I've been using it probably two to three times a week. And it's really, really helped a lot. And I used it last night and I noticed a significant difference from when I went to bed to what it's like right now. And I think this is a miraculous product, especially for the price. Every time I put it on, I do feel a very slight tingle. I will tell you that, but I do love this product and will be reordering more. And I'll be picking up more of the Glow Maker, which is the vitamin C, E, 
and ferulic acid serum that they make that's a really great dupe for uh, the CE Ferulic from SkinCeuticals. It's like $168. For $28, you can get a still a one ounce, very similar packaging from Malup. I think it's fantastic. All right, so another kind of duo that I've been using to help take care of like my lip situation, because it's been really, really, really dry, really cold. It's warmer today, and I love it because it's like in the mid 50s, and I'm like, wait, it's January, and it's in the mid 50s? So I've been loving that, but that's just been the last day or two. Uh, but it's been so, 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 so cold, like down in the teens and 20s for a large portion of this month. We've had a lot of snow and my lips just were not surviving. So at night, I used to use one or the other, and then I started using both. So I do love the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask, and I find that this is really good for keeping my skin hydrated. So I'll put a nice layer of this on. And then I have been using... This, this is uh, Balm.com's mango, uh, this is the mango version, over the top, kind of like to seal it in. So this is my occlusive to make sure I don't have like moisture leaving from my lips. When it's not so, so, so cold and the heat isn't on everywhere I go, one or the other will be just fine to keep me hydrated. But January, it got like super cold here. And I put a layer of this and this on and it's helped so much. Another thing that I have been absolutely loving is this. This is my new vintage hand mirror. I do have another one that I like quite a lot. I love the pattern on this one, kind of that marbled look, but the mirror itself is a little, a little wavy. And I think it's just because it's so old. It's from the thirties. This one I think is, you know, maybe a similar vintage, maybe thirties or forties. Um, I could be wrong cause I bought it at a, a secondhand store. Um, but the mirror is in such a better state. It's like absolutely perfect. So I'd kind of been, you know, favoring this one for such a long time, but it's got a small ripple in it. And this one's like perfect. And I do love that it's a slightly, you know, longer handle. I like the shape of this one because I get my whole face in. I get my whole face in here, but not all my hair and my hair can, you know, anyway, um, I guess if I hold it back, I do, but I love the shape of this. I love the detail on the back. It's so pretty. And the color, I just think these sorts of hand mirrors are great. I paid $40 for this one and I didn't know that the mirror wasn't like absolutely perfect because I bought it on Etsy. And this one, I said, no more buying hand mirrors that you can't look at the mirror. And this was $7.50. And I was like, I win. <laughs> so I've been loving my new hand mirror. It's You've probably seen it a lot and you'll continue to see it, but I do love vintage hand mirrors and these two are definitely favorites. All right, let's talk some makeup. I have been using this a lot. I was a little unsure when I first picked it up in, I think it arrived late November, early December. This is the pretty fresh hyaluronic acid tinted moisturizer from ColourPop. It might be like perfect for the type of weather we're having now. I find that it sits very nicely on my skin oops, <laughs> when I use a sponge with it. This is the Cloud Sponge from Juno & Co. This is nice, it's super soft, it's very pillowy, and um, I find that it, it, it does suck up a lot of the product, but it makes sure that I get a nice, even layer. I think it looks really pretty that way. I know not everybody likes this product, but I do tend to like light coverage foundations, and since it's a tinted moisturizer, it definitely does do that for me. I'm still in love with the Jouer Essential High Coverage Concealer. I am to the point now where like as I scrape the sides, I'm not getting hardly anything out on the doe foot and you can see straight to the bottom. I think I need to order another one of these, but I'm gonna take out the little stopper here at the end and see how much more of it I can get out before I order another one. This is still like my favorite go-to concealer. Me and Hula Light, we, we've been good friends. Uh, this is still in my Project Pan and I've been loving it. Another item from my Project Pan is this pressed blush. This is the shade I Need Space. And I've been wearing these two like the whole month. And not just because they're in my project pan, but I decided this year in my project pan to put stuff that I actually enjoyed using. It wouldn't be a chore to like try and finish it up. And I've been living in these two things and they're like not my default because they're my project pan, but my default because I like the way they look and they go with everything. All right. This is really funny, but this little single here, I keep it like there's a little box on this table in front of me of like the things I reach for daily. I keep this in there. It's from Wet n Wild. It's the shade Creme Brulee. I 
am surprised. It, when I purchased it, it was 99 cents. I probably had it for like a, maybe two years and it got lost in all of my eyeshadow singles. And I was rummaging through there uh, in December. And I was like, you know what? And I pulled it out and I've been using it a lot, like every single day. I use it like right under here, arch of the brow. If I don't wanna do a shiny inner corner, but I do want some highlight, I'll put this here. Sometimes if I have a shadow going out too far and I need to blend, if I don't use whatever powder I'm using for the day, I'll grab a little bit of this on a brush and just kind of blend out my edges. It's been really great for that. I've had this since the 21st, so it's kind of unfair to say that it's a favorite for this month, but since I received it, it's the only eyeshadow palette I've used. I have a new one that I got in my Beautylish Lucky Bag that I still have yet to crack into. <laughs> um, but it's the Enduring Love Palette from Sydney Grace. I have used this so much. I'm using, um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five shades from here. Um, I'm using everything in the bottom row except for this shade, and I'm incorporating this shade as well. So though that's what I'm wearing on my eyes today. I did throw on another single from Sydney Grace. Uh, Sydney Grace shadows are just my favorite right now. And I am wearing bronze to perfection right in the center of my lid. So um, I really have been reaching for uh, either my Sydney Grace singles or this Enduring Love palette since it arrived on the 21st. And I love this palette so much that I'm wearing makeup more often than I normally do during the week. Because normally during the week I wear uh, makeup like, you know, three, four times a week. And since I've gotten this, I've like worn it every day except for one. <laughs> and I think that's very telling that it just, it inspired me. My favorite way to use this like really quick and fast is to throw this shade here. It's called Cherish, like in the crease, deepen it up with a little bit of this shade here. This is Victoria and then throw Devotion kind of on the lid for a little sparkle. It's very soft glam. It's very easy. I've done that a ton. I also did a look when I first got this palette uh, using these more um, kind of purpley plummy shades. Uh, I am in love with this. I have actually used this turquoise too. I didn't think that I was going to, and I loved the way it looked. They used it all over the lid. And it, it, you know, I, I think the quality is fantastic. So I really still have really been enjoying Sydney Grace. All right, lips. Oh man, the lipstick I'm wearing today, I really have used a lot. It's a Dior lipstick. It's their Stellar Shine in the shade Mirage. It's a really pretty, shiny, glossy, with a little bit of shimmer in it, nude, and I love it. And it's a kind of a pinky leaning nude. And the other thing I've been doing is been using sheer reds. And these are the two others that I've used like a ton this month. And this is funny, this has been living in my purse. I had to, both of these, I had to pull it out of my purse. This is the um, Bunny Gloss Bar from Tony Moly in the shade, I think it's Cherry. Um, anyway, but there's not much left to it. That's all that's left, but I love this. And when you swatch it, you know, it's it's a very sheer red. Same thing is true for, and I'm sure you've heard me talk about this before, this is Lipstick Queen's Medieval, and this is also a very sheer red. This has a little bit more, more color to it, but it doesn't build up. And uh, if you swipe Medieval over and over and over itself, it goes from being really sheer to being a little bit more, and it's, a vitamin E stick. Both of these are extremely hydrating. I do love that hydrated feel on my lips and those have been giving it to me. And on days when I'm not wearing makeup, like the first half of this month when I was sick and in bed, I lived off of these two, like, you know, sometimes like on the lips and then dab a little on the cheeks and I was like, and that's it. <laughs> so it was basically a no makeup day with a little help from uh, a sheer red lipstick. So I spent a lot of time being sick this month um, and being sick is hard for me. I have had the same headache 24-7 uh, since the end of July, July 29. Uh, my headache came back and it hasn't gone away. And anytime I get sick, because I have a Chiari malformation, um, which is the weird brain thing that I have that I've had surgery for so many times. Uh, if I cough or sneeze, intracranial pressure changes. And because part of my, my brain is so large, it's kind of plugging up the hole in your the bottom of your skull between where the cord connects to your brain 
so intracranial pressure changes and I don't have enough spinal fluid flow and I have like, it feels like my head's gonna explode with all of this pressure every time I sneeze or cough. And it gets really bad to the point where um, I'm in bed sometimes with a cloth over my eyes and I'll do anything to not cough or sneeze. Um, but some of the things that got me through, this is really silly, like real hankies, like handkerchiefs. Uh, I don't mind at home if I'm using Kleenex, but there comes a point where I don't want to be pulling a ratty Kleenex out of my bag every single time if I'm out like at the doctor's office or what have you. So I picked up some hankies and they always look better when they're pressed but I love these for when I'm sick and I need something here. I do always keep a clean one in case I have a watery left eye. And I'm, I like I have a whole bunch like this that are not white because the white ones, the makeup doesn't come out of them. You have to really work. And so I use colored ones just to dab the corners of my eyes because I'm not really crying much. Just eyes, they just water. Thank you, 40s. <laughs> All right, another thing that I have been addicted to is this tea here. This is one of four unopened boxes. I've already gone through four boxes in the month of January. That's a lot. So this is the Bigelow Lemon Ginger. I love this tea, it's so good. And what I do is I have um, a kettle, an electric kettle that I just fill up with two uh, liters of water. I heat it up and then I put it all in my hydro flask. I'll put three tea bags in here, I'll put a giant glug of honey, and then I'll just steep it, and this keeps it so, so hot. Um, and it's 32 ounces, so I'll drink 32 ounces of tea, and when it's done, I'll go and make another one. And since I'm using three tea bags at a time, I'm going through this stuff like this. But this really helped during my um, cold, uh, season and then I just got so used to having it like this in the summertime this is full of ice cubes and water but in the wintertime I was like I should be putting tea in there and I've, I've just been loving it and by the way if you're curious it's uh, stranger things stickers on here so it's all stranger things but I something else that I love but my hydro flask just makes me happy those are my favorites for January and it, it was a different month because I spent so much time sick in bed and then uh, the last half of the month, I would say like from the 17th, 18th on, I was able to really um, get back into the makeup and really enjoy it. Uh, in the first half of the month, I really didn't do much of that. It was like skincare and uh, my hankies that really kind of, and my tea that got me through. <laughs> Thank you for watching today. I would love to know if you have, uh, it doesn't have to be makeup, but any favorites for this month, things that really have been like your consistent go-tos. For me, it's been that tea and my hydro flask. Like keep myself hydrated and uh, it's been really, really great. Or if you do have a makeup favorite, let me know what it is in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being subscribed. If you haven't, would you please? And I'll see you again soon. Bye.